See you Saturday. You hang up and realize you have two days before the main family get-together of the year. Your shopping list is ready, so you head to the largest supermarket in town. You follow the list to the letter, grabbing everything you need as fast as possible. The cart is full of fruit, vegetables, dairy, meat, fish, bread. Well done you! One hour later, you get back home and proudly hand in the shopping bags to your grandma. She takes out the items one by one and frowns more and more at each of them. Turns out the fish and meat you picked aren't fresh at all, and those bananas and greens won't make it till Saturday either. Grandma says she'll save the day. You make a good snack to not go shopping hungry. Now you won't buy the stuff you don't need. Then you get in the car together to do it all over again. Smart shopping means cruising the perimeter of the store where you can find all the fresh and healthy stuff. Fruits, vegetables, dairy, meat, and fish. They normally reserve the center aisles for junk food. So, you decide to skip them altogether. Your first stop is the produce section. Grandma says you should spend the most time here. And it's a good thing you arrived before lunch. Most grocers get fresh produce when they just open, or later in the evening before they close. You reach out for packaged tomatoes, but Gran stops you. Prepackaged fruit and vegetables are usually more expensive. Plus, they don't let you check each item. A good ripe tomato can weigh double as much as an unripe one. It should have smooth and firm skin and smell like a tomato. No! Don't put that poor bruise thing into your cart. Bruises on produce are a perfect breeding ground for bacteria. Try to find firm cucumbers that have no blemishes or soft spots. The best ones are dark green. If you see yellow spots, it means the thing is overly ripe and will likely taste odd. The same goes for peppers. They must be of intense color with no stains. Now turn it upside down and count the bumps. Four bumps means fewer seeds and better taste. Two to three bumps mean bitter taste. The stem of a fresh pepper is always green, firm, and crispy. Take these potatoes with sprouts out of your cart right now. Go for the firm and smooth ones, without the wrinkled skin, soft dark spots, or cuts. Pick only green lettuce with no holes or brown edges. The brighter its shade of green, the better. Moving on to fruits and berries, Gran explains that a ripe watermelon will come with a dry brown stem. This one with a dark yellow must have been resting on the ground long enough to get sweet. The same's true for melons. The ones with a yellowish bark is sweeter, as it had received enough sunlight by the time they picked it. Check out the stem of the bunch before taking those bananas home. The stem must be green to light yellow and not turning brown. Only take single bananas if you want to eat them right away. They survive longer in clusters. Never judge a mango by its color. Instead, gently squeeze it. A ripe mango will give in a bit, and it will also have a fruity aroma at the stem end. Smaller fruit is normally sweeter, but that rule doesn't work for strawberries. Different sorts come in different sizes, so bigger ones can be yummy too. Their ripening ends once they've been picked up, so go for bright red berries with fresh green leaves. Those would look dry and wilt if they had picked the berries a long time ago. That lemon won't give you much juice. It's pale, which means it's an older one. This firm, unblemished one with smooth skin will be way better. It also feels heavier, and that's a good sign as well. You're shopping for a big event, but otherwise, you'd never buy too much produce at a time. If it's fresh and organic, it won't naturally last too long. And always opt for fruits and veggies that are in season. They'll be less expensive and of better quality. Next up, honey. This one looks odd to you as it has those crystals at the bottom of the jar. But Grandma explains it's a sign of freshness. It's normal for honey to crystallize when the temperature drops. It's also a good sign it looks opaque. It means it's more natural and healthy and not pasteurized. You check the list and realize you still need some bread. You already know the best option is the whole grain kind. You pick it up and study the label. Made with whole grains won't do. This one that says whole wheat flour is good. The fewer ingredients, the better. If you can't pronounce the name of the additive, you don't want it in your bread. It shouldn't have artificial flavors, colors, or preservatives. You lightly press on the bread you just chose. Bingo! It goes back to its original shape, which means it's high quality. If you see your finger mark on it, it could have been previously frozen, or the baking process went wrong. You move towards the canned food section, and Gran jumps in your way. She's sure canned foods are bad for your health, as they contain a huge amount of sodium. 
you convince her to at least study the labels. You should always pick canned foods that don't have too much salt or sugar in them. The ones preserved in water or their own juice are the healthiest as they have fewer artificial ingredients in them. You find some tuna packed in olive oil. The package is perfectly closed, so it's all good. You know you should never take a rusty can. It can be dangerous. Okay, looks like you've got everything you need, except for meat and dairy. You know you should always grab those last. They can spoil without a fridge if shopping gets too long. You make some room in your shopping cart to protect your fruit from raw meat juice, just in case. Red meat should be of dark color. Purple, red, and brown are all good. Pork should be the shade of light blushing pink. It should smell good. It can't be pungent in any way. If you see many fibers, it must be some tough meat with a strong flavor. Beef tenderloin won't have any grains because it's super tender. White flecks and streaks of fat throughout the muscle are another sign it's juicy and tender. If you aren't planning to cook meat straight away, pick the one with the latest best before a date. You can still eat it safely after that date, but it tastes better before it. Dirty marks within the packaging are a red flag. Someone must have handled it with dirty hands. If the chicken you're about to buy has skin, it should be paler than the flesh, not yellow or light brown. The edges mustn't look dry. The cuts must be smooth and uniformly sized. If it's not butchered well, there might be small joints and bones in your lunch. Any chicken that has been in the container for more than two days should better stay on the shelf and not in your cart. Gran picks up a fish and stares it in the eye. She explains a good fish will have protruding ones with shiny black pupils. The skin of fresh fish should be silky, not sticky or dull. Squeeze the filet. If there's a trace of your finger mark on it, it's no good. The final stop of the day, dairy products. You should reach for the back of the shelf to find the ones with the most distant expiration date. The same rule works for frozen foods, packaged foods, and eggs. Stalkers locate the newer ones behind the older items. Grandma recommends choosing pasteurized milk. No raw products will land in your cart today. When milk goes through pasteurization, they heat it up to fight off disease-causing bacteria. It doesn't take away the nutritional value of the product, so no worries about that. When picking the best yogurt, pay attention to the label. The more words you see on it, the better. Three basic ingredients are enough to make it work. The rest should be preservatives and sugar you don't need. Live and active cultures is something you want to see on the ingredients list. Don't forget to get some cheese. Not this one though. The soft kinds like ricotta, cream cheese, goat cheese, or shredded cheese shouldn't have any mold on them. It can penetrate inside easily. Some mold is fine on hard cheeses. You can carefully cut the area around it and still eat it. Yay, you're done with shopping. Time to go home and cook. Hello, your luxury bag package has arrived. We have a super romantic recipe for you. It'll especially be great for Valentine's Day or your someone special's birthday. Breakfast could not get any cuter than this. Now this hack is gonna take your veggie sandwiches to a whole other level. Just be careful with the boiling hot oil. Fill the fried dough pocket with your favorite vegetables and bon appetit. Oh, this video is making me hungry already. You might want to write down the ingredients in your recipe book for this one. You know, just to remember everything later. One color is not enough, by the way. If you want this cookie to be a joyful burst of color, that is. Don't worry, the colors are going to be bright and gorgeous after they're baked. Make sure not to burn them. I somehow always manage to do that. Cookies and milk, everyone? Potatoes must be one magical vegetable, wouldn't you agree? Because there are probably more than a thousand different dishes you can make with them. And they're all delicious. There are two types of people at a cafe. Those who get a slice of cake or those who get a cookie. But I personally get both. Talk about having a sweet tooth, am I right? We already made colorful cookies, so why not make a rainbow cake now? 
Are you throwing a big party at your home soon? Then this dish is just for you. Because it's super easy to prepare, it's big, it's filling, and it's delicious. Oh, and did I mention it probably would take 15 minutes to prepare? Look at the cheese melt. Makes my mouth water. I could eat this for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Vegetables have a bad reputation, you know. Most people think they're boring and tasteless. But we're here to fix that common misconception. Something can be both nutritious and yummy at the same time. Take these carrot rolls, for example. They could be a great alternative if you're not fond of eating sushi. Just make sure to dip them in soy sauce for the full experience. Here's a quick meal you can prepare just with everyday breakfast items that you already have in your fridge. And it's super fresh and healthy. Perfect dinner for hot summer nights if you ask me. Add the topping of your choice and enjoy. Another example of how vegetables are tasty gifts from Mother Nature. This kind of looks like a forest, wouldn't you agree? The key here is to leave no empty space behind. By the way, having a good oven is key if you want to experiment in the kitchen. Let's say it's the middle of the night. There's no takeout place left open, but you're craving some fast food. This is just the recipe for that. Come on, admit it. You thought this was going to be a version of pizza, right? Anyone want crunchy pasta? This is healthier than store-bought chips, you know. By the way, here's a fun fact about pasta that not many people know. The first reports of people eating pasta actually came from China. Speaking of sausages, I'm on a fun fact roll here. So here's one about hot dogs for you. The world record for hot dog eating is 76. Let's just hope the person who broke it was okay after eating them. Anyway, back to our delicious hot dog egg crepes. Well, if you have a better name for these, don't hesitate to let me know in the comments. From the looks of it, that avocado needs a bit more time to ripen up. But since it's going into the blender, that shouldn't be a big problem. I suggest you blend that for a couple of minutes to achieve a smooth paste with no clumps. I assume that's cream cheese. Who needs a dipping bowl, am I right? Great for Super Bowl season. You won't need to do the dishes after having guests over. I prefer my popcorn with melted butter. Well, that goes for corn on the cob, too. I can already tell this is going to taste amazing. Hey, they should start selling these in movie theaters as well. This will not be one of your regular fried potatoes, people. Trust me. I know you have the urge to cut small cubes, but make sure to keep the potato in one piece. Otherwise, this won't work. Have you ever heard that Cleopatra supposedly took milk baths to keep her skin looking young and healthy? Well, don't get me wrong, these milk ice cubes are not for that. That's one way to cool down coffee. Somebody's making a real mess in the kitchen. Why not put the whole bag in the water? It'll be much safer and cleaner. That's one sharp knife you got there. But here's another way you can use it. Looks like you're gonna have to get your hands dirty. And in some cases, touching raw meat with your bare hands may not be a good idea. That's where this cold water hat comes in handy, pun intended. Sometimes you might not have the time to make dough. In those cases, using bread would work perfectly fine to prepare delicious snacks. You know what? This is not fair. I can't continue my diet plan anymore, especially after learning about incredible recipes like this one. That may look like a plastic sheet, but it's actually rice paper, so very much edible. 
these chips could be a healthier alternative for your kid's lunch bag. Trust me, there's no way they won't like how these taste. This next quick recipe is going to bring a whole other level to frozen yogurt. We're adding berries here, but feel free to pick any fruit you want. I call these frozen yogurt crackers. Do you have a milk frother at home? If your answer is yes, then great, because that's all you need to prepare instant banana milk for yourself. Yep, you don't even need a glass. You can put them in an ice bowl to keep your drink cold and fresh. Are we making chocolate crepes? Count me invested! By the way, any type of chocolate bar will work for this. The trick here is to have enough oil in the pan as well as to heat it beforehand. Add some powdered sugar on top to make it look like it's out of the hands of a Michelin star chef. This is the stuff that dreams are made of. Something sweet? Check! Now it's time for another savory recipe. You can use both mashed or grated potatoes to make this one. The choice is up to you. Just make sure they're freshly prepared. Add a cup of flour and an egg. Then cook the mixture until it's golden brown. Your potato waffles are ready to be served. You park your car in a dark alley, lock it and leave it for just a couple of minutes to go grab a coffee. When you come back, your beloved vehicle is no longer there. A siren sounds. Oh wait, that was the alarm. Phew! Luckily, that was all just a dream and you can help it to never come true. First of all, you can install a steering wheel lock in your car. It can either be a long metal rod stretched over the steering wheel or a chain lock connected to the seatbelt buckle. Both options are good to slow down the bad guys that might break into your vehicle. But don't make it 100% thief proof. The thieves can just cut the steering wheel or even the lock, so you need to add some extra layers of protection to be sure. Criminals like to use gadgets that catch signals and help them steal cars without a key. For example, if the car is parked in a garage of a private house or under the windows of a multi-story building, the keys are accessible through the radio device. Thieves can easily intercept the signal and the owners of the car won't notice anything. To protect your keys from relay attacks when they're stored at home, use something metallic. You can simply wrap the keys in foil to block the radio signals or keep them in a safe metal box. Park in areas that are well lit and have security cameras. Building entrances and parking lots are your best choice. An isolated garage isn't always the best idea because it could put you personally at risk. So if you do park in one of those, stay close to the attendant or where security cameras can see you. Keep the wheels turned towards the curb whenever you park. It will make it way harder for thieves to try to tow the auto with a tow truck. To steal a car, a criminal will have to make some extra maneuvers. It takes time and effort and can demotivate the bad guys. In many cases, it's not your car the bad guys are after. It's that shiny new laptop you dropped in the front seat or your designer purse that looks like it's stuffed with valuables. Things like that are hard to resist and often lead to a break-in. So take an extra moment to hide your belongings in the trunk and your vehicle will be less tempting for criminals. Don't just jump out of the car, even if it's literally for a moment to buy something. If you need to get out, always stop the engine first, close the windows, and lock the doors. Storing your vehicle registration in the car is a good way to make the lives of thieves easier. They can present it to police officers in case they get pulled over. Your insurance information and VIN can help them get new keys to unlock the car no problem. If you aren't the only person using the car, find some secret place to hide the registration and only tell the people you trust 100% about it. You can also take a photo of your title registration and insurance information and store them on your smartphone. 
Another option is to make copies of those important docks and keep them with you. Mark your windshields, windows, and mirrors with a VIN number, which is the identification number of the vehicle. This service won't cost you a lot, but will demotivate the bad guys. They'll have to spend money to change the marked glass, and they will think twice if they want to invest in your vehicle. You can also play spy and leave marks on different parts of the car with an invisible pen or cover it in micro dots with your ID details. This won't stop thieves, but it will make it easier to track the vehicle if it gets stolen. If you know that you'll have to leave the car somewhere new and you don't feel like it's a safe place, hide an old switched on phone or tablet in it. Make sure you have a way to track it. Then, the Find My Phone feature will help you locate the phone and the car in a matter of seconds. You can either get a cheap data plan for real-time tracking or rely on GPS. It should work even without a SIM card. Protect your side mirrors from thieves with special covers. You can find models that come with locks made from anti-cut materials. The cover will also protect your side mirrors from scratches and scruffs and extend their lifespan. Plus, you can go creative and choose covers with your favorite team's logo or something else that's important to you. Not a bad idea to customize your vehicle on a budget, right? Car thieves use different schemes to distract your attention. A piece of paper stuck to the rear view window, a plastic bottle over the wheel, or a shirt on the trunk of your car. These and other small things will likely get you out of the car. The bad guys can also pretend to be nice and helpful and to tell you to pull over because there's something under your car. The idea here is, again, to get you out of your car and let them steal it. So instead of going out, close the windows, lock the car doors, and don't go out if there's someone suspicious hanging around. Criminals aren't the only bad guys who can do your vehicle harm. Harsh winter weather can be a problem too. If you don't want to find your wipers stuck to the windshield and scrape them off every morning, leave them up when you're not driving. You probably heard it's a bad idea because it ruins the arm's spring and can tempt someone to steal your wipers. Don't worry, the springs don't lose their elasticity, and there aren't really many people who are after your wiper blades. In case you forget to put the wipers up and find them safely stuck to your windshield, try running the AC. Cold air will defrost the windows just like warm air. It works by dehumidifying the air. If your lock is frozen and you can't get inside your own car, treat it with some hand sanitizer. That substance can melt the ice without a problem. To prevent your windshield from getting frosty, Mix three parts vinegar and one part water and spray that solution on the windows overnight. It'll save you some scraping time in the morning. Always keep your gas tank more than half full in cold weather. Moist air will be happy to fill any empty space above the fuel in your tank. And that air will condense to water in the cold. Water is denser than gasoline so it settles at the bottom of your tank. When enough of it accumulates, it'll go through the fuel line to the engine, and that's not really good. To protect your favorite car from rust, wash your vehicle regularly. Something as simple as that can be the difference because dirt damages the protective layer of clear coat and paint and makes it easier for rust to sneak in. Don't forget to wash the undercarriage of the car and the wheel wells. Make sure the car paint isn't chipping or peeling. You need that layer to protect your vehicle from the elements. In the cold season, salt from the road can also cause some rust spots. To avoid that, you should at least rinse the car every week, even in the winter. And don't forget to wax it at least twice a year. That's another good way to keep your paint looking good as new and protect it from UV rays. One more thing is to keep the inside of the car clean. If you spill something inside, always mop up the liquid. You don't want it to seep further and hit the metal parts. This is exactly how rust forms. 
Now, a basic sponge and baking soda can make a great eraser for little grease spots, fingerprints, and stains on your walls, or many other painted areas, such as furniture or wood fences. Just sprinkle a bit of baking soda on your dry sponge and scrub the stain area in a circular motion. And then use a clean, dry cloth to wipe the baking soda off to get rid of any remaining dirt. If you're worried that this technique might ruin the paint, try just a bit of soda first and see how the surface reacts. If you want to extract the maximum amount of juice from your lemon or lime, put them first in a microwave for 15 seconds. After that, give them a little roll on a hard surface. And now, feel free to use your manual juicer. When you smash some glass or pottery on the floor, it can be pretty hard to notice and pick up all the tiny fragments, especially if the glass is transparent. Guess what can help you? A slice of bread. After you remove all the big pieces, carefully wipe a thick slice of bread across the floor to pick up any tiny fragments. They should just get stuck in the bread. But make sure to do this very carefully or just put on protective gloves. And don't absentmindedly make yourself a sandwich right afterwards. Hey, just saying. If you're a huge fan of garlic, here's a tip for you. Cut one garlic bulb in half and rub an empty bowl for a nice flavor. Now you can put your pasta, risotto, or salad in the bowl and enjoy your meal. Pringles tubes are made from a mixture of paper, plastic, and metal which makes them a good option to organize groceries. You can paint the tubes in a plain color to make them match your stylish, minimalistic kitchen and then attach removable labels on the side. Have you ever struggled with threading a needle? Here's an easy way out. Place your toothbrush on the table and put the thread across the bristles of the brush. Now gently push the needle down over the top. The bristles will help you poke the thread up through the eye effortlessly. Once you got the loop, just use your fingers to pull it through. If you've got these annoying tea stains on your favorite mug that won't wash off, try to apply some toothpaste to your sponge. This is also applicable when you need to make your dirty cutlery shine. It's best to use a mildly abrasive sponge. It's pretty helpful when it comes to removing dark spots on dishes. Now let's say you've recently received a really gorgeous bouquet. But the flowers got this sad look in a blink of an eye. You can extend their living very easily and almost free of charge. First, fill the vase or vase with fresh water and put a couple of teaspoons of sugar. This will help to nourish the flowers. Before you put the flowers back into the vase, cut about an inch off the stem. But make sure to slice it at an angle like this. This trick will increase the surface of water absorption. Repeat this with all the stems, especially with hard ones. Now put the bouquet back into the vase or vase. The flowers should cheer up within 12 hours. If you suffer from cold feet, put them into a vase or vase. No, wait. Use a hairdryer to warm up your slippers before using them. This tip is also applicable to your outdoor winter shoes. Speaking of feet, pew, there's a great way to get rid of unpleasant smells. Apply about 10 drops of your favorite essential oil on two cotton balls. Now place the balls into the shoes and leave them overnight. Remove them in the morning and enjoy the fancy smell. You can also mix a couple of your favorite fragrances to customize your shoe fragrance even more. If your drain is a bit dirty and smelly, there's an epic tip to solve this issue. Put down a couple of spoonfuls of baking soda and pour down a little vinegar. And now step back and enjoy the show. It will foam up and help loosen any dirt. We've all tried to light a match outdoors in windy weather and failed. Well, we've been doing it all wrong. There's an easy way to prepare a matchstick in advance using a sharp knife. Carefully carve back the four corners just behind the head of the matchstick. Then repeat the same technique one more time so it looks like this. These eight little splinters will help create a stronger wind-resistant flame. If you have a small wardrobe with limited space for hanging new clothes, remove some metal pull tabs from the tops of old drinking cans. They can make the perfect holding loops for fixing the second hanger. Just put the ring over the hook. This is how you can double and even triple the storage space on one hanging rail. If you need to make an emergency candle, you can use one very common item from your fridge. Have you guessed what it is? Butter. Cut off a piece of chilled butter and place it on a heat-proof dish. 
poke a hole straight down through the center using a toothpick or a wooden stick. Now we need a wick. You can use a common cotton string or twine. Cut the corresponding length and poke it through the hole so it goes all the way to the bottom of your candle. Gently coat the end of the wick with butter and light up your brand new DIY candle. Use hair straightening tongs to smooth out those annoying creases on your tie. Or let's say you're working in a shop and you have to deal with fluffy piles of cash. The tongs will help you iron your money to put them in smaller stacks, which then fit neatly into your backpack. Hey, let's not go there. Wow, this zipper is tough. Why can't it slide smoothly like all other zippers? But don't rush to throw away your coat. Grab a bar of soap and gently rub it up and down against the zipper. Repeat it on both sides. Can you feel the difference? Cut one leg off your old tights and put two long cardboard tubes inside it. Go ahead and thread it under your internal door with one tube on each side. This will protect you from any draft because the tights will seal up any gap under the floor. You can also use this trick when you need to make a full blackout in the room. Just make sure to use thick black tights. Let's say you're visiting a conference in another city, and your schedule will be very busy. You can prepare your outfits for each day in advance and put them into different compartments of your hanging clothes storage organizer this way. Now, put it right down into your suitcase, zip it, and you're ready to go! When you arrive at the hotel, you can just carefully pull out this organizer and hang it in the closet in just two seconds. But don't forget to take the shoes, too. Is there a way to drive a nail into a wall without hurting your fingers? The answer is yes. Grab your comb and push the nail in between the prongs. This way, you'll keep your fleshy fingers far away and safe. And once you've got it started, you can easily slide out the comb and finish driving the nail. If you need an emergency metal scrubby sponge to wash your pot or pan, use a piece of tin foil. Crumple it up into a ball, apply a little bit of dish soap, and your brand new sponge is ready. Now start scrubbing and get ready to be amazed! It works really well, huh? By the way, the tin foil doesn't have to be new. You can recycle the piece you've already used for cooking. And the final tip is for perfectionists. If your shower head has a hard water buildup, the water won't come out straight. To fix this, fill a plastic bag with plain white vinegar. Then put the shower head inside the bag, attach it with a band, and leave it overnight. In the morning, you can give your shower head a little scrub with an old toothbrush or clothes brush. This should help remove the remaining hard water dirt. This trick is also applicable for faucet heads. If you're struggling with opening a container or a jar, don't exert yourself too much. Just run the lid under hot water for half a minute and then dry it for a better grip and see how it magically opens. If you're following a recipe that calls for both garlic and onions, add onions first. When you see they're almost translucent, that's the perfect moment to add garlic. Garlic will cook faster than onions, so if you put both of these products in a pan at the same time, the garlic will burn and your meal won't taste as good. You're a fan of avocados? Here's how you can easily check if one is ripe or not. Just take a look at its tail. If you can pull it out without any difficulties, the avocado is good to eat. If you can't do it easily, better leave it for a couple of days since it's not ripe yet. Here's how you can tell if an egg is fresh or not. Break it and check the yolk. If you can see that it has a clear circle of white surrounding it and is located in the middle, you have a fresh egg. The yolk is supposed to be voluminous too. If it's flat, it's better not to eat the egg. If you see that the white part doesn't have clear borders and your egg spreads around, the chances are it's spoiled. To tell the quality of your eggs, put a raw one while it's still in the shell into a bowl of water. If the egg remains on the bottom, you're good to go. If one of its sides comes closer to the water surface, your egg is not fresh, but you can still eat it. But if it floats, it's not fresh enough to consume. Brushing your teeth in the morning and before you go to bed doesn't have to be the same process. It's important to brush your teeth in the morning, but more so that you have fresh breath. But in the evening, you should brush your teeth more thoroughly because that's how you can prevent bacteria from breeding and protect your gums and teeth. Speaking of bad breath, want to know a good trick to fight it in no time? Cucumber slices! 
If you don't have a mint within reach, simply eat a slice of cucumber to fix this problem. When you buy natural peanut butter, store it upside down. That way, it won't separate into solids and oils as much. And you'll bring the oils to the top, which is why the peanut butter will be easier to mix. When you put something down for a while, comment it out loud. For example, I've put my phone on the floor right next to my bed. When you do this, you engage multiple parts of your brain, including the language centers, and create a more vivid memory. That way, you'll be less likely to forget about it. You can do the same when you, for example, blow out a candle, unplug your hair straightener, turn off your stove burners, or take your keys, wallet, and other stuff when you leave the house. You'll get rid of many of those moments of doubt that make you wonder if you really did those things. If you visit your friend and bring along something you don't want to forget when you leave, just put it next to your car keys. That's something you definitely can't leave without. If it's hard for you to make a decision, flip a coin. It's not really about letting it decide for you, but while you're waiting to see the result, your mind will automatically start thinking about the outcome you really want, but perhaps can't admit out loud. You're in the supermarket and want to know if the pumpkin you're holding is good or not. Just knock on it. Does it sound as if it's empty inside? That's a good sign. Meanwhile, on the outside, it should be solid. Sometimes we dispose of foods that are still good to consume, like yogurt that's become layered. You know that layer of liquid on the top? That's just whey that contains nutrients. Stir your yogurt to make it smooth because it's still good to eat. When you're buying chicken, check if there's liquid around it. It's better when it doesn't have it. For instance, if you take some frozen chicken out of the freezer and see a lot of ice around the piece, it's better not to eat it. You're moving into a new apartment or house? Set up your bedroom first. Buy a bed before anything else. When you're exhausted after carrying your stuff around and cleaning the whole day, you'll just want to have a comfortable place to rest. Here's a trick that will help you figure out if your coconut oil is adulterated. Leave it in the fridge for half an hour. Coconut oil becomes solid at low temperatures. Adulterant oils detach and you can see them as a separate layer. When you want to check if an onion has some mold, just take a look at what's under the first layer of peel. Do you see stains that look as if the peel has faded? Mold. Better avoid buying this vegetable. Or make sure to remove all that mold if you've already got it. You can determine whether a lemon is ripe or not by eye. If its skin is smooth and has a rich yellow color, it's ripe. A greenish tint, as well as a pale yellow color, tells you it's ready to be used yet. This one's for coffee lovers. If you really want to enjoy your overall coffee experience, it's way better to buy beans and grind them yourself. Or ask if a salesperson can do it in the store when you buy your coffee. That's the best way to make sure that the product is really made without any extra additions that can be present in a regular ground coffee. If you're looking for a simple way to separate yolks from egg whites, try this. Take a clean and empty plastic water bottle, crack an egg into a bowl, squeeze the bottle over the yolk, and slowly release it. This way, you'll create a vacuum which will make the yolk slide into the bottle. Ta-da! It's separated from the white, just like that. Let's say you lost an earring or some other small item in the house. A vacuum cleaner will help. Just don't forget to pop a stocking over its head. This way, the item won't get lost in the dust and dirt inside the vac's bag. You want to take your favorite lotion with you on a trip, but it takes up too much space? Try using a contact lens case. It doesn't need a lot of space, and it's a perfect solution for short trips. A hair straightener is a surprisingly good tool when it comes to ironing collars, especially if you're not a fan of regular ironing. When you want to check if your batteries are good or bad, just drop them on the table from approximately 6 inches. If they bounce once and fall right over, they're good to go. If they bounce around more than that, they're either done or on the way out. If your razor doesn't have a plastic cap, just use a binder clip to cover it. And to protect the rest of your stuff if you're packing it with some sensitive items or materials. Nail polish is a simple yet effective way to differentiate your keys, especially if they're all similar. Finally, you don't have to try each of them before getting to the right one. When you're reheating leftovers in a microwave, space out a circle in the middle of your dish. This way, your food will heat up more evenly. 
straw is a cool tool to remove strawberry stems, don't you think? A muffin tin definitely comes in handy when you want to serve different condiments for your barbecue. Plus, it will save you some time with the dishes later. Here's how you can protect your bank card from potential fraudsters. Use a marker and cover the last four digits. You can also use a sticker that's easy to remove and place it over the security code. Have you had a house guest that didn't use a coaster? Get a hairdryer and hold it a couple of inches away from the stain. Blow it on medium heat for a couple of minutes to evaporate the watermark. If a faded ring remains, mix equal amounts of vinegar and olive oil in a bowl. Wipe it onto the marked area and rub it in until the stain disappears. Then wipe it off. Don't waste time scrubbing the burnt stains off the bottom of a pan. Instead, fill it with water and add three tablespoons of salt. Let it sit overnight as the salt dissolves the burnt marks. And in the morning, pour the water out of the pan. This way, it will be much easier to scrub all that grease off. Picture this. You're on vacation and your shirt has become all crinkled inside the luggage. You need it tonight, but the hotel doesn't have an iron. Don't panic. Hang the shirt up in the bathroom. And while you relax in a hot shower, the heat and moisture will unwrinkle your shirt. It won't be perfect, but it will get much better without any effort. The football is on and it turns out you've run out of standard batteries. You can use a smaller battery instead that easily fits inside. Now take some aluminum foil and crunch it up. Fit it into the gap on the negative or flat end of the battery. All done! You can turn on the TV now. Once your flip-flops crack and the plug easily slips out of the hole, it's normally a sign that you need a new pair, but there's a way to extend their mileage. Push the plug back through the hole, then take a bread clip and attach it to the end. The clip will provide enough support for the plug to remain in place. You've received a package and the receipt is taped on. You've managed to detach it from the box, but how to separate the tape without ripping the paper? Hold both ends of the tape apart, and by pulling it slowly, the tape stretches and separates itself from the paper without tearing it apart. Ziploc bags are perfect to keep things dry, but it would be great if they were larger. Take two and turn one of them inside out. They can now connect and work as one large bag, big enough to protect a keyboard. There's no need to carry your keys in your hand when you go for a jog. Instead, put them inside your pocket, take a rubber band, then tie it around the pocket from the inside. This stops the keys from falling out. You've broken your key in the door. It's stuck. Great! Arranging for a locksmith could cost up to $100, but for a cheaper and quicker option, try using a hot glue stick. Heat the end with a lighter, and once it's warm enough to melt, push the glue into the keyhole. The melted glue will enter the available space covering part of the key. Once it cools, it compresses and gains a strong hold of the key's end. Now, just pull it out. If you need to siphon liquid through a hose and want to avoid using your mouth, put one end in the liquid and hold the other upwards with your thumb closing the top. Now shake up and down. This jiggle motion pushes liquid upwards a little each time. And once it reaches the top, lower the exit point and let gravity do the rest. You've left your keys locked inside the car. It's an older model with a roll-down window. You could get the coat hanger and begin the long process of finding the lock, or use duct tape. Make about 20 two-foot-long strands. Stick them onto the window, allowing enough room for the tape to grab onto at the bottom. Then with a friend, take the ends of the tape, holding them together, and pull downwards. The force will allow the window to lower enough that you can unlock the door. While drilling long screws into hardwood, your old drill might not have enough power, leaving them only halfway in. Before the drill gives up, get a block of wax and scrape the edges of the screws with it. The wax works like a lubricant, melting as it gets warm and providing easy entry for the screw. You're out camping, but you didn't bring anything to light the barbecue. Take a small plastic bag that won't leak. Fill it up with water and close it tight, making a round bubble. Hold it over where you want to catch the light from the sun. The bag of water will work like a magnifying glass, starting up the barbecue, just as long as it's a sunny day. Missing a corkscrew or a cork breaking halfway? By using a stove lighter, heat the top of the bottle. The heat slightly expands the glass, and this forces the cork out the top. You've super glued your fingers again. Take some salt and pour it on top of your stuck fingers. Put your fingers into the water and slowly rub. The mixture will dissolve the glue and release you in no time. 
While hanging up a painting, it can be impossible to find that stubborn nail. Place a fork upside down and insert it so the nail is in between the middle fork teeth. The fork has provided a long arm that's separated from the wall, making it easier to slip the string of the painting over the nail. Once it's perfectly balanced, simply remove the fork. You need to put a cake into a container, but taking it out again later by lifting it up from the inside might ruin the cake. Put the lid upside down and place the cake on the lid. The base of the container is now the lid, making it much easier to access slice by slice. Pour out water more efficiently from large jugs and bottles by swirling. This will make the liquid inside spin, creating a vortex. The vortex allows for the air to flow back into the bottle as the water pours out, much faster than the glugging alternative. There's an easier and less messy way to remove eggshells from a boiled egg. Once fully boiled, crack the shell on both ends by tapping them. On one end, pinch off the shell. Use the opened end to blow with your mouth. The force of air will push the flesh and expand the eggshell, forcing out the egg undamaged. When the hinges of your laptop break, repairing them can cost up to $300. A far cheaper fix is to buy a picture frame and tape it to the back of the screen. You've dropped a small piece of jewelry on the floor, seemingly impossible to find. Take a stocking and place it over the end of the vacuum hose. Give the area a good vacuum and check the end periodically. You will eventually find it sitting at the end. You've drilled a hole in the wall, but the drill hole is now too wide. Remove the screw and find an object that is slightly shorter and thinner. Pieces of plastic, small wires, paper clips, or even toothpicks are perfect. Place whichever item you find inside the hole. It's filled the gap enough so the screw will now re-enter securely. Taking the trash out can put you in a gross scenario of getting bin juice on you. A great way to avoid this is by placing old papers at the bottom of the bag. Now, not only does it absorb all the liquids from the food and other sources, but also helps prevent bad smells from forming within a bin. Nobody likes mosquitoes, and pesticides are pricey. A cheap alternative is to take a plastic bottle and cut the top part off from the bottom of the funnel. After removing it, turn it upside down and put it inside the bottle. Mix two cups of warm water with two tablespoons of sugar. The mosquitoes will be attracted to the formula inside and become trapped. Now just sit back and relax without getting bitten. So you're sick and tired of forgetting your friend's birthdays and spending hours memorizing two lines for a work presentation. Well then, get some chopsticks ready. Or better yet, ask Elon Musk for advice on how to improve your memory. What? You don't have his phone number? No worries, we did it for you. Back in 2001, Elon Musk phoned mechanical engineer Jim Cantrell, who used to work for the French Space Agency. Musk wanted to know if it could be possible to send a spaceship to Mars. He was willing to build his rockets, so he borrowed some books on the topic from Cantrell. In no time, he was ready to return the books and discuss rockets, physics, and astrodynamics with the scientist. Cantrell was surprised. Want to become a rocket scientist from scratch too? Well then, listen up. As we can sum up from his interviews, Elon Musk has two basic learning rules. First, you gotta make sure you're building your own tree of knowledge. If you want to go beyond your limits of learning, start with a trunk and big branches, and only then get into the leaves. And by now, you might be wondering, what on earth is he talking about? Well, let's say you're learning a new language. Instead of remembering individual words, you should start with some general rules. When you understand and memorize those, you build a strong <laughs> trunk for your knowledge. It works for anything you're trying to learn, from physics to TikTok trends. The second rule is that you can't remember what you can't connect. Elon Musk never learns anything at random. He connects every new piece of information to some deeper, more solid base he already has. So instead of collecting tidbits of knowledge and throwing them into a fire that will eventually burn out, you have to discover ways to connect the leaves and branches of your knowledge trees and let them bloom. To help your trees grow, you gotta surround yourself with people who are the best in their field. Can't invite the world's brightest minds for a barbecue in your backyard? Well, at least make them virtually present in your life. Watch their interviews, listen to podcasts, and read, read, read as much as you can. 
Musk recommends books about other geniuses and reading as much as you can in general. When he was nine years old, he devoted himself to reading the complete Encyclopedia Britannica's and then moved on to science fiction books for around 10 hours daily. If reading is not your idea of fun, can I interest you in clenching your fists and other unconventional ways of pumping up your brain power? 99% of the world population has a dominant hand. What's yours, by the way? Yeah, I mean the one you use to write, make food, paint, etc. Try to switch to your other hand now and then to strengthen neural connections in your brain. That will make your mind and memory sharper. Use your opposite hand while brushing your teeth, cleaning, or washing the dishes. It might seem hard the first time you do it, but it'll give your brain the perfect kind of stimulation by adjusting. Just keep practicing this exercise regularly. And oh, don't do it while you're driving your car. Zumba, salsa, jazz dance, hip hop, dance your heart out as often as possible. Enroll in dance classes or watch an online video with some dance moves you've already thought looked cool when others were doing it. When you learn new dance moves, you boost your memorizing skills and processing speed. Try using all your senses in everyday life. Visit a farmer's market, travel, garden, bake a batch of cookies, take notes at a meeting, or try a new restaurant. Whatever you do, focus on touching, tasting, smelling, hearing, and seeing things all at the same time. The more senses you use, even for something you do every day, the more brain power will involve in keeping that memory. Spice up your daily life. Take a new route to work, put your calendar on the other side of the table, or try a new type of coffee. Pay attention to details you usually ignore. Can you tell how many plates you have in your kitchen cabinet right now? Count them or the number of stairs you take every day. Also, try taking a shower with your eyes closed. Doing things using the sense of touch will signal your brain about them and give it a good workout. Still waiting for the fist clenching part, aren't you? In 2013, psychologists from Montclair State University experimented. They concluded that clenching the right hand for 90 seconds helps in memory formation. If you do the same with your left hand, it can improve your memory recall. They asked 50 adults to remember words from a long list. Those who clenched their fist could recall more words, believe it or not. The researchers believe that clenching a fist triggers specific brain regions responsible for memory processing. Can you remember the name of that girl someone introduced you to at their birthday party? Or that nice mechanic who helped you fix your car? You'll probably recall their face, but the name is a different story because it doesn't tell you that much about them. If you want to give your brain another dose of a workout and make an effort to remember that data, just say it out loud. Repeat all the things you've just thought, read, or heard out loud. It will strengthen your memory. Read aloud. Go back to those things through longer periods of time, every few hours, every day. That's how you master complicated data and skills. Build your own memory palace. Put the memorabilia back. I'm talking about another memory technique here. Choose a place that you know really well, your hometown, school, or maybe your closet. It's ideal to choose the one that is large and has many details. Let's say your house. Now think of a route that goes through that place. You enter through the front door. What do you see next? Your kitchen? Okay. Now choose the location where you'll store the information you want to memorize. Each spot has to be unique. It can be a separate room or an object in that room. Now. Grab a piece of paper and draw your palace in every detail. Once you're done, close your eyes and visualize the image. Open your eyes and compare the image in your mind with what you have on paper. Keep practicing until they match perfectly. Divide the information you want to memorize into chunks and spread it throughout your palace. If you're trying to remember a speech by heart, locate the first phrase on the doormat and further line by line around the house. Make up your coding system. Use more than words and numbers. A swan can replace a number two. And a marching orchestra can stand for march. Try to find symbols that make you feel something. They can be moving and making sounds. Whatever helps you remember them. Visit your memory palace every day for at least 15 minutes. Walk through it as you would on a museum excursion. Except pay attention this time. You can walk through the entire route or focus on one room per day. 
Just close your eyes and go there whenever you have a second. You can use the same palace over and over. Just refill your chosen spots with new information and set on a new tour. You can also go royal and use more than one palace at a time. Say no to GPS. Not when you're driving through some unknown city at night, of course, but every now and then. A 2013 research found that always relying on technology to guide you causes a part of your brain called the hippocampus to shrink. It's responsible for spatial memory and relocating data from short-term to long-term storage. So try to figure out your way to get to places whenever possible, or at least go there using GPS and travel back relying on memory. Use chopsticks. Studies show that it helps grow new extensions of nerve cells. It enables the communication between brain cells. If you aren't a chopsticks kind of person, try knitting, rolling a pencil between your fingers, or any fingertip activity. It all has a similar effect on your brain cells. Ready to discover some life hacks that are low-key useful, but high-key strange and ridiculous? Well, let's go! You wake up feeling brave and dangerous. You're going to wear an all-white shirt on your morning walk to work whilst drinking your Americano. But the plan backfires as you spill the coffee all over yourself. So you've instantly just gone from feeling like a ferocious polar bear to a helpless white furry puppy. But no worries. All you need is a black marker. Make sure it's not permanent and a world map. Find a place that shows you a set of islands. Hey, why not use the Bahamas? Mm -hmm. Now, add some contouring using your marker. Write the word Bahamas outside of the stains. And voila! Those coffee stains on your shirt now represent one of the most famous sets of islands in the world. You've just transformed a fashion disaster into a funky, stylish masterpiece. Now, go get yourself another coffee. Have you ever looked up at the moon, convinced that there was a face looking back at you? Most of us have, which is weird given that the moon is nearly 250,000 miles away from Earth. This supposed face, of course, is just an illusion. It's shaped by the dark splotches of lunar maria. These are smooth plains formed by the lava of ancient volcanic eruptions. I want to show you a life act that will allow you to feel like this famous face of the moon. All you need is an empty roll of toilet paper and your phone. Oh, and that beautiful face of yours. Simply put your face near the hole of the toilet roll and your phone beneath the bottom hole. All that's left to do is snap a picture and take a peek. Next up, are you a snacker? I mean, you just can't stand going into business meetings or classrooms where you're not supposed to eat. I might have found a solution if you're someone who likes Jesus. All you need is a chapstick tube, <clears throat> an empty one. Simply fill up the empty tube with cheese, and just like that, you have a discreet cheese dispenser at your mercy. <laughs> now, it's estimated that over 65% of people use lip balm. Some use it daily, others carry it around with them just in case their lips get dry. Who's going to suspect you're actually munching on cheese if you pull a lip balm container out? On average, for those who manage to actually fall asleep on planes, 61% will experience a below-average sleep. A lot of people have trouble falling asleep there altogether. But it's not impossible if you can replicate a sound sleeping environment. I present to you a sleeping mask. Just grab a hair bobble, bring all of your long hair to the front, and tie it as normal. It's literally like having a set of curtains over your face, which is what we need since the absence of light will send a signal to our bodies that it's time to rest. Now, according to research, two out of every three Americans name popsicles among their favorite foods to eat during the summer. Who can blame them? It's delicious! The only problem? How quickly it melts! But I've got something that's going to help out all of us popsicle lovers. All you need is a popsicle of your choice and a cupcake wrapper? That's right! When you take your popsicle out of the freezer, it's in a solid state because the particles that conform to it are together. As the heat increases, which in 99% of cases is the moment it leaves the freezer, these particles begin to loosen and melt. With each drip from your popsicle comes a tear from your eye. Now it's time to wipe those tears away. All you have to do is pop the popsicle stick through the cupcake wrapper. 
The wrapper will then catch any of the drips that drop from your popsicle, or any tears of joy that drops from your face. Let them soak in the wrapper while you soak up the sun and enjoy your popsicle carefree. Now, one in every three Super Bowl parties have chips laid out for their guests. And there's a good chance you might serve some to your friends that are currently on their way over. But what flavor will they like? If you only Mm. have one kind of potato chip brand at your house, no problem. Let's spice this up. To give your friends a wide range to choose from, you're going to lay them out in a muffin tin. Just fill each hole with a different type of condiment. Your friends are going to think you're the best host ever. Research has revealed that salsa is often the most popular dipping sauce, followed by French onion and guacamole. So make sure you don't forget to lay these out on that muffin tin. Ever get home from a long day of work, excited to have a steaming hot bath? There's just one problem. Your bathtub is missing its bath plug. Don't panic, I have a solution! Dip back into your party supplies, and you'll be dipping into a nice hot bath in no time. You just need to get your hands on a balloon. But stop, don't fill it up with oxygen. Instead, simply fill it up with water and tie a knot on the balloon. Oh, and resist that urge to throw it at someone. Now, go put the water balloon in place of the bath plug. Make sure you fit it nicely and firm. You can check it by turning on the tap to see if the water begins to fill. If it does, it means it's time for you to finally enjoy that hot bath you wanted. Now, would you like to make it the best bath ever? By having a beverage of your choice floating beside you throughout? Let me show you how. Go back outside your car. Actually, put your clothes back on first. I promise you'll be back inside for that bath soon. Grab your phone holder from inside the car. Run back to your bathroom and stick it against the wall by the bathtub. Position it in a way that will fit the glass containing your drink. Make sure the holder's secure, as I'm confident you don't want to be bathing in spilled Coca-Cola. Now that you've ensured this, I'll leave you to enjoy this much-delayed bath and move on to the next life hack. Speaking of beverages, those cans of soda you just bought get warm way too fast. Let me help you out. Quickly pop to a nearby store and buy some ice. Then just find an empty cardboard box and a plastic bag. Open up the box and then cover it with the plastic bag as if you're going to use it as a trash can. Then get your ice and pour the necessary amount inside the box. All of a sudden, you have a fully functioning drink cooler at your disposal. Go grab those cans of soda and put them inside it. Check back in a few minutes to find them nice and cold. In the meantime, just enjoy the sun. Sometimes, as you're going for a walk, you'll encounter surfaces such as muddy trails and forests that have the potential to ruin your shoes. Even if they're walking shoes, you still want them to look good, right? Well, let me show you a trick to keep those sneakers of yours sparkling. Once more, all you need is a balloon. Blow the balloon up and keep the air hole clutched with your hand so as to keep it inflated. Put the balloon on the ground, keeping the air hole covered, and put your hand inside your shoe. You heard that right, hand, not foot. Then press down on the balloon with the shoe. This will cause the balloon to deflate, and once finished, it will be tightly wrapped around the bottom of your shoe. This will act as a perfect form of protection against any dirty surfaces you'll be walking over on your travels. Now just do the same with your other shoe, and away you go! Now when you get home, you'll probably be so excited to get inside, kick your feet up, and relax. This is why struggling through all the keys on your keyring upon arriving is so annoying and tiresome. Well, don't worry, I've got an easy and satisfying fix that will make this process much more instant moving forward. All you need is some nail polish. Well, a couple of different colors. Designate a specific color for each key and get painting. Then just let the paint dry off for a bit. When it's done drying, you have a new color-coded set of keys to your name. Convenient, isn't it? Road trip! You and your best friends are rushing down the highway. Suddenly, one turns off the AC and puts the windows down. No! They wanted to help you cut some gas costs and just made one of the classic mistakes. 
Turning off the AC and opting for a natural breeze helps while you're stuck in traffic. While you're driving with your windows down on a highway, you're creating unnecessary wind resistance. Your car now needs more energy to move forward, and you end up burning more fuel per ride. While you're struggling through traffic inside the city limits, though, turning off the AC isn't a bad idea. It might not be the most comfortable ride on a hot day, but you're here to save some money, right? Now, a quick common sense test. You have two routes to choose from. One is shorter and another looks longer on the map. What's it gonna be? Common sense is screaming. The first one, duh. But in fact, the shortest route isn't always the best choice in terms of gas usage. You gotta pick the one with the least stop signs, traffic lights, and traffic jams. This route will require less speeding up and slowing down, both major gas eaters. So plan your route wisely. You can consult apps that show real-time traffic data or interactive maps with stoplights. Do you also have a bag of sand, your old inflatable bed, a pair of shoes, and five water canisters in your trunk? Or is it just me? Well, you gotta declutter if you wanna save some cash. Losing 100 pounds that you carry around in your vehicle will decrease your gas usage by up to 1% per gallon relative to your vehicle's weight. More weight means more fuel used. That's some simple traffic math. Brake and accelerate less. Driving at a steady speed above 50 miles per hour helps you save some gas costs. Every time you hit the brakes or take off at a rocket speed at the stoplights, you're making your engine work hard and it feeds on fuel, you know. Plus, aggressive driving is bad traffic etiquette. So speed up slowly and coast to a braking stop smoothly. Don't go zero to 60 or floor the car until you have to brake abruptly. Cruise control can help you with that drive calmly and steadily when you're on flat terrain like the highway. Once you approach some hills or mountains, cruise control will make your car eat too much gas for no good reason. So turn it off and let the speed go down a bit as you ascend. And then slowly speed up as you go down. This will take some workload off your engine. Park your vehicle a couple of blocks away from your destination. The next time you make the seventh trip driving around the block searching for a parking spot, it will make all perfect sense. When you sum up the frustration, your time spent on those searches, and of course, extra gas costs, you'll be okay settling somewhat further from a busy shopping area, business center, or your favorite popular restaurant. Don't wait until the last minute to refill your tank. Make it a habit to do it once it's three quarters empty, or whenever is more comfortable for you. This way, you won't have to frantically stop at the gas station nearest to you when it's time to refill. Instead, you'll have your time for some research. There are special gas finding apps to help you find the best deal in your area. Sometimes it can be across the state or region border, and it's never ever by the highway. Once you're ready to settle down with one gas brand, don't hesitate to ask for something in return. Sign up for their loyalty program, save an app, get a card, whatever it takes to get a discount, cash back, extra points, and other perks from them. Some grocery stores partner up with gas chains, letting you use the points you earn at the store to get a discount on gas. Even five cents per gallon can make a difference, so inquire about those. Hybrid vehicle owners, this one's for you. Try turning on the AC while your car is still plugged into the charger. It will help extend the vehicle's range when you get on the road, which means less money spent on gas. If you're driving one of the newer model cars, your engine must automatically stop when you idle your car. If that's not your case, avoid idling to save fuel. Waiting for the traffic lights to turn green takes 45 to 120 seconds. And starting your car requires only 10 seconds of gas. So, if you have to stop for more than 10 seconds, turn your vehicle off. If you let it run, it can eat up to an extra half a gallon of fuel per hour. Now, in case safety isn't one of your primary concerns, at least take good care of your car for reasons of economy. Check if your tires are well inflated at least once a month. When underinflated, they wear out quicker, drag, and waste gas. Check your car's manual to see how often you should tune up your engine. It depends on the age and model. Clean the filters to keep the car going while eating less gas. Use the right motor oil. 
Otherwise, your car will have to work harder than it should and waste gas. There's no need to play it cool and fill up with premium fuel unless you have a high-performance engine that really can't run on anything else. That will cost you much less in the long run and won't make your vehicle go faster, cleaner, or get better mileage. If your car's manual recommends but does not require premium, at least go with lower grades for extra savings. Gas chemistry has advanced over the past decades, so don't worry about the quality of regular gas. It's all good. If you have an older car, check out your gas cap seal. Once it weakens, it lets oxygen leak into the gas tank. When that happens, gas burns way faster. You can replace the gas cap, but be prepared that the sensors might not recognize the new one, unless it comes from the manufacturer or authorized supplier. If you have a manual transmission, you're in luck. You have complete control over your RPM. That's revolutions per minute. Lower gas means higher RPM. The higher the RPM, the more torque the engine produces and the more fuel it's using. So shift into the upper gears quickly. It differs from car to car, but an optimal solution would be to change to second by about 15 miles per hour and move to top gear by the time you're going at 30 to 35 miles per hour. That cargo container and the bike rack you have on the roof of your vehicle will have to go. They increase your car's wind resistance, so the engine must do more work to maintain the speed. It could mean up to 20% extra fuel consumption on the highway and up to 8% in the city. If you do need that extra storage, opt for rear-mounted cargo boxes. For those in car buying mode right now, look into a hybrid electric, plug-in hybrid electric, or all-electric one. I mean, you'll definitely cut gas costs with an electric car. Suppose you aren't ready for that much of a change. In that case, many popular models actually come in hybrid form. Toyota RAV4, Hyundai Sonata, and Volvo XC90 are all yours to go. And here comes the bonus tip that will help you cut driving costs by 100%. Are you ready for it? Don't drive! Okay, okay, let me explain. Don't drive whenever it's possible. Walk or bike to work or use public transport. If that's too much for you, at least swap driving responsibilities and gas costs with colleagues living in your area. Do you know any other tips to save gas? Maybe you have personal favorites. Do let me know in the comments below. You got used to browsing the web, playing games, and connecting with your friends on social media, all at the convenience of the iPhone in your pocket. But what if I were to tell you that there were many more hidden uses inside it? Back tap. Have you ever noticed that fancy Apple logo on the back of your iPhone? If you've got a cover on, go ahead and pull it off so you can check it out. Okay, you're now probably thinking, there's nothing secret about this, the obvious brand logo on my iPhone. Sure, it might not seem so special, but did you know that it's more than just a handsome decoration? It's also, as a matter of fact, a button. Don't believe me? Give it a try. But, before you go tapping at it like you're using your phone backward, you'll need to adjust your settings. There's a reason this handy feature is considered a secret. First, pull up your settings, tap on Accessibility, and then the Touch menu, and navigate your way to the very bottom of the list, where you'll find the Back Tap button. Found it? Great! You can choose the Double Tap or Triple Tap option, whichever you prefer, and best of all, you'll have a multitude of options to choose from. You can have your Back Tap feature take a photo with your camera app, alert Siri, switch apps, and even take a screenshot. It'll make things a lot easier than performing finger gymnastics when you need to take a screenshot. Adjust Siri's pronunciations. Have you ever asked Siri to call a friend? Maybe you've said, Siri, uh -huh. call Hermione, only for Siri to comply with calling Hermione. Okay, you may not have Harry Potter's best friend in your contacts list, but we can all agree it's not the easiest name to pronounce. Siri might be one of the most intelligent digital assistants in the smartphone game, and sometimes a bit of a smarty pants. 
but iPhone's companion can often struggle to pronounce even the most common names. If this bothers you, then you'd be delighted to hear you can actually correct Siri's pronunciations. The simplest way is to catch Siri in the act and say, that's not how you pronounce. It will prompt Siri to ask for the correct pronunciation for each name, first, middle, and last, or the name of a place if it's not for a person. Once you've given it, Siri will generate some options, and all you have to do is pick the correct one. If your digital best friend is still struggling, it might help to spell it out. Open your contacts, select the person Siri is struggling to pronounce, and choose Edit. You can add the correct pronunciation in the Notes section using phonetic spelling and click Pronunciation Spelling to train Siri to get it right. Even a super smart digital assistant needs some help sometimes. Hey Siri, it's Leviosa, not Leviosar. Measure app. Is a toolkit too clunky to carry around? Or maybe you've forgotten which drawer you placed the measuring tape in. That's okay. iPhone has got some more secrets that will help you out. Did you know that iPhone has a few tools in its arsenal that will serve your carpentry needs? Take the Measure app, for instance. You no longer need that long, awkward-to-use floppy tape to get a measurement on your coffee table, bookshelf, or couch. The app uses augmented reality to measure objects around you using your phone's camera. The first thing you'll need to do is move your phone around so the app can analyze the area you intend to measure. You'll eventually find a white circle with a dot in the middle of your screen. From there, it's not so different from an actual measuring tape. Just line up the dot with the corner of the object you want to measure and trace it to where you want the measurement to end. If you're a builder, you might want to stick to the physical tape for more accurate measurement. This option isn't necessarily for the professionals. But the app is excellent for getting a rough estimate. The Measure app can also be used as a level. Simply switch over to the Level tab in your app and place your phone on the surface where you want to get a reading. When you get a green screen and a zero reading, your surface is nice and level. It's not so different from the Compass app's level feature, so you might have had some bad experiences with this feature before. With your new digital toolbox, your iPhone will make you the handiest person in the house. Create Custom Vibration We all live pretty fast-paced and busy lives these days, and whether we're at work, in a movie, or at school, more often than not, we have our iPhone set to vibrate. Sure, there are some cool ringtones to choose from, but there aren't many occasions where a sudden tune coming from our pocket wouldn't distract those around us. Or worse yet, it leads to our phone being confiscated by a disgruntled employer or teacher. Luckily, there are plenty of vibration options to choose from. You probably have various ones for different occasions and different contacts. None of those settings quite your jam? Apple has a solution to this too. Another hidden feature in the iPhone is creating a custom vibration for your alerts. If you want to feel the beat to your favorite song when your best friend calls or texts, or when it's time to wake up in the morning, you create that pattern on your iPhone. Once again, you'll need to go into those handy settings, then in Sound and Haptics, choose the tone you'd like to customize. Tap Vibration. Then, Create New Vibration. The next step is to create those sweet vibrations like a soundless DJ by tapping your finger on the screen until you have the silent rhythm you're happy with. Now you've got a vibrate option to your liking. It might even make the early morning wake-up calls just a little more pleasant. Just like the Beach Boys, you'll be picking up good vibrations. Trackpad with smartphones, we no longer need two hands to use a keyboard. All you need is one good thumb. Yet, it can still prove a little tedious sometimes as typos are easy to make, and all your characters can't fit all at once on that crammed keyboard at the bottom of your phone screen. You might be typing out a long body of text, only to realize you left out the R out of the word drive a few sentences back, which might give your friends the wrong idea about what you're doing. 
It can be a fiddly task to fix it, and it's often easiest to delete the entire word and write it all over again. Or so it may seem. If you're a stickler for good grammar in your text messages, you might want to shift your keyboard into trackpad mode for easier editing. That's right, another hidden gem on your iPhone. It's easy to access too. All you have to do is hold your finger on the space bar. All the other keys will gray out, and you'll be able to move the cursor to wherever it needs to go. Then lift your finger off the space bar to continue typing. Another tedium to writing on that tiny iPhone keyboard is shifting tabs to use numbers and symbols. It may not seem like much, but it's sure to be a little frustrating when you have to jump back and forth multiple times in the same message. However, there is another hidden feature in your iPhone's keyboard that will alleviate this. Hold it down instead of tapping on the numeric 123 tab, and it will bring up the numbers and symbols tab. As long as you're holding it, the tab will remain open to pick your character and releasing will return you to letters. Soon, you'll be fast enough to write a novel on your smartphone. Did you ever tie a string between two plastic cups so you could talk to your friend from opposite ends of your home? It may have seemed pretty cool at the time, but that plastic cup couldn't tell you the weather or let you send an email, right? Indeed, we've come a long way since the string telephone. In fact, can you even imagine life before smartphones? They have become almost like our clothes or the shoes we walk in. It's almost our consistent accessory. Now you know some of these handy secrets and you'll be an iPhone Pro. However, if these secrets aren't for you, there's always the string telephone. At least it won't run out of charge. Yep, moving objects through a door when it keeps closing is super annoying. So instead, tie a rubber band around the handle on each side of the door so that it crosses over the latch. The latch then won't be able to pop out, and the door won't lock shut. To check whether your bed sheets are fully dried, take a mirror and place it underneath. Leave it there for around 5 minutes, and if it steams up, it means the sheets are still damp. A damp bed can be a breeding ground for mold and other nasty fungi. You can paint the end of your keys with different colored nail polish so that you can easily identify which key is which. In order to pour the perfect amount of oil or salad dressing, poke holes in the foil seal rather than removing it completely. This prevents a big amount rushing out quickly. To prevent band-aids from slipping off your finger, cut a line on either side. This will create four smaller sticky strips rather than one large one and it will be much easier to secure. If you enter a public restroom and see a red Solo cup someone put under the seat, better choose another booth. It means there's no toilet paper in this one. The red cup is a frequent replacement for a toilet paper hub, which is also put under the seat for the same reason. Speaking of restrooms, almost any public toilet has a large gap between the floor and the door. The reason for such a zero-privacy thing is to actually minimize the level of privacy and comfort so that people won't stay there long and there'd be no lines. It's also to clean and safer if some emergency occurs. Forgot to put your drink in the fridge? Wrap a wet paper towel around it and put it in the freezer. In just 15 minutes, your drink will be ice cold. Instead of filling your purse or wallet with store loyalty cards, you can take a photo of them. Just take one snap of the barcode, as well as a picture of the front so you know which card it is. Then, when you visit the store, just scan the barcode on your phone to collect your points. If you're using your phone to watch something and are tired of propping it up and having it fall back down, try using your sunglasses. Simply place them upside down and use the parts that go around your ears to hold the phone in place. Now, if you don't have the correct size coin to put in your shopping cart next time you go to the supermarket, you can use your key instead. If you have a key with a rounded end, you can insert that where the coin would go and the cart should unlock. If you're struggling to get your taco shells to stay in place, use a muffin tray. Flip the tray upside down, spray it with oil, and place your tortillas in the gap. Cook them for around 10 minutes at 700 degrees Fahrenheit for the perfect crispy taco shell. You can use a water bottle to separate egg yolks. Hold the bottle over the yolk and squeeze it to suck the yolk up. 
Drop it into a separate bowl, and you're good to go. Next time you're struggling to clean your ceiling fan, use a pillowcase. Slide the pillowcase over each blade to wipe off the dust. This way, excess dust is caught inside the pillowcase and won't rain down on you. To properly clean your blender, fill it with soap and hot water. Switch it on for around 10 seconds and let the swirling water do the hard work. Then just rinse it off and it's clean. Put down a strip of masking tape before nailing into plaster walls. The tape should stop the plaster from flaking or spreading dust all over the floor. If your shoes smell bad, put a few dry tea bags into the shoe. The tea bags will absorb the smell. Try using toothpaste to remove small scratches on furniture. Rub a peanut size amount on the scratch in a circular motion until the scratch buffs out. Then wipe it with a damp cloth and voila! Drill a couple of small holes in the bottom of your trash can to stop the bag getting stuck when you pull it out. The holes stop the vacuum like effect that keeps the bag pinned down. You can easily remove the sticky residue from jars using cooking oil. Soak a cotton pad in some oil, then rub it on the sticky area. Allow it to sit for a few minutes, then it should wipe away easily. Now, you can use hair conditioner to make that new wool sweater less itchy. Just soak it in lukewarm water with a couple of tablespoons of conditioner and leave it for 15 minutes. Then just dry it and your sweater will be much softer. An odor on your fingers can be removed with some minty toothpaste. Rub them together with toothpaste, then rinse them clean. It'll help get rid of the odor and act as a light scrub, too. Now, before you throw out those old sneakers, arm yourself with an old toothbrush and a little toothpaste. Work the paste into the dirty spots and leave it for at least 10 minutes. Wipe it off with a damp cloth and repeat if it didn't do it right the first time. Be careful with color toothpaste. It may leave stains. Washing your clothes on a low heat, or even better, a cold wash, will make them last twice as long. Drying them on the line, if possible, will also make the material last longer than if you used a dryer. Metal zippers are very durable, but they'll snag more than other kinds of zippers. Just gently rub a bar of soap over the teeth of both sides of the zipper. The residue will help lubricate it, making it easier to slide open and closed. When you can't squeeze any more toothpaste out of your tube, just cut the end off. This will allow you to get what's left inside onto your toothbrush in a pinch. If there's enough for more than one use, place it in a plastic bag for later. Freezing candles before use can make them burn a lot slower. This will cool the wax right down and extend its melting time. A pack of cotton pads has those strings on it so that we can hang it on some hook or holder. And no, there's no need to untighten and tighten the pack again. Look at the bottom of the pack. It has a perforated line. Tear along it, and now you're good to pull out a cotton pad. If you've ever tasted a Nintendo cartridge, you'll confirm that, yes, they taste revolting, leaving a sour, bitterish aftertaste in your mouth. They're covered with denatonium benzoate, one of the most disgusting flavors known. Actually, this taste is kind of a hidden function. It prevents people from swallowing those cartridges. Headrests in a car are about comfort, and detachable headrests are about safety. If you pull the headrest out of the seat, you'll see two bars, which are quite sturdy. If you ever get locked or trapped in a car, you can get out of there smashing the window with these bars. Rough edges on the dimes are just about design. The coins used to be made of precious metals to show their real value. People would shave off the edges, spending the shaven coins with the same value, and melt the edges to new coins. To avoid it, minters added that pattern so people could tell if someone cut that coin before. That black grate on a microwave isn't just some fancy decoration. It's called a Faraday shield, and it prevents the rays from escaping the microwave. It also speeds up the heating, so you could enjoy yesterday's leftovers faster. A triple handle on a jerry can is there to make it easier for two people to carry it and distribute the fuel evenly. Gas cans often have a second hole that actually needs to be uncapped, too, before you pour the gas. The air passage will prevent it from pouring out, so no more fuel waste. 
So you decided to buy a famous brand garment from a reseller. The price is real good, but something just feels off about it. Check out the stitching. It's one of the less obvious but key giveaways of a fake. It will be straight, neat, and tightly packed on authentic items. All stitches will be made of threads of the same color. Fake ones will have less stitching, as it means fewer costs on production materials. The lines won't be that straight either. Carefully study the logo. On imitations, it's often out of proportion compared to the real thing. The angle and slope might be different, so you'd better check what it should really look like on the official website. Many high-end brands stamp logos directly onto their products, or have metal or leather ones. On real designer items, the logo is always perfect, with no details missing from the company name and no spelling mistakes. There won't be any errors in anything written on the garment whatsoever, not just the logo. The fabric of authentic items won't have any pulls or rips in it. It won't fade or bleed. If the item is supposed to be made of leather, it should feel weighed. If it's made of cotton, try squeezing some fabric in your fist for a few seconds. If it looks like crumpled paper, the manufacturers most likely treated it with a special agent to keep its shape. It will look terrible after the first wash. Take a stretchy part of a dress or a skirt, tug at it, and then let it go. A quality item won't lose its shape after it. Fabric patterns will always match on real items, and zippers will be covered with a strap. These ones are the most reliable and long-lasting, unlike open plastic zippers that often break. All zippers on dresses, skirts, and any other type of clothing should be of the same length and color. Buttons must be secured with no thread sticking out. The buttonholes should be neatly overlocked and evenly cut through. Gently pull the seams apart. If you see some gaps, it's definitely not a high-quality garment. If the coloring on the handles, straps, or fastening looks faded or leaves marks on the folds, that's another sign of a low-quality item genuine brands would never manufacture. Designer items can't come in low-quality packaging. Your prospective high-end purchases will be packed in branded cloth drawstring bags with branded tissue paper. If you're shopping online and the seller won't send you close-up images of details to check, they probably have something to hide. Manufacturers of counterfeit jeans mostly care about recreating their outside and try to produce them as cheaply as possible. They use poor quality materials, so their jeans will feel lighter and thinner. They might also have strange coloring or dye runs. A real inside label for the size and style of jeans should have small stitches close to each other. This micro-stitching is a security device that makes the production process more expensive. A fake label will have longer and wider spaced stitching that won't look that neat. Zippers and their tags are rarely stamped on imitations, and so they look generic. The same is with rivets. The ones on real jeans should carry the logo or manufacturer name. The inside seams are made shorter to save on textile costs. Designer jeans lookalikes will have the cheapest cardboard used for their branding patches on the back and fewer cloth tags than the real thing. A leather patch on the back of genuine jeans won't fade or wither. You can only check this after you've washed them several times though, or if you're buying a second-hand pair. The first thing to check out when shopping for brand sneakers is the box. It shouldn't be damaged. Real sneakers won't have any visible glue stains on the sides. The font on the lettering on the insole should match the size of the shoe and can look unnaturally spaced out and bigger on a faux pair. The size tag is always attached to the bottom of the insole and shouldn't be off-centered. The finishing on the real pair heel tab won't be sloppy. The name of the brand on the back of the shoe has to be perfectly centered. All the letters will be of the same sizing and height. Genuine leather on authentic pairs will feel softer and more comfortable on your foot. They use good quality rubber in authentic pairs, so the midsoles won't start to oxidize and change their color. Sneakers by famous brands will be perfectly symmetrical in every way. You can recognize some designer boots by a certain eyelet shape and a number or the contrasting or matching color of stitches.
those have to be parallel to each other and look professionally done. When shopping for a designer bag, take a close look at the logo. Check its size and see if the plates are clear and have the correct spelling. Interior labels will tell you the manufacturing nation. If it says France or Italy, you have a lower chance of getting a knockoff. Designers mostly add authenticity cards to their bags and mark their items with various serial numbers. Do your research online to find out what the real one should look like for your specific bag. They don't imprint their name on every model, so check if yours is supposed to have it. High-end items hardly ever go on sale. Even if that happens, it's never a clearance price, so don't fall for it. If your dream bag is supposed to be made of genuine leather, make sure it feels and smells like it. If it's super smooth and even, then it's likely a fake. Real leather has a slightly uneven texture. And the real thing can't have a glossy finish. That's another giveaway of an imitation. Count the pockets and make sure they're correctly placed. Fake bags are often recreated from photos, so the lining color might be of the wrong one. It must be exactly of the same color as the bag. The hardware should feel solid and shouldn't chip. The stitching should be perfectly even. Designers will never leave loose threads or back and forth stitching at the end of a seam that makes production cheaper. A high-end watch made of top quality materials can't be too light. An authentic watch will always have better movement than a counterfeit one. The mechanism will be smooth, and you won't hear a loud ticking sound, unlike in a fake. A bad smell, uneven coloring, scratches, and abrasions on the wristband are some more signs of a fake product, both for high-end and medium-priced popular brands. Check out the back cover of your prospective new accessory. It should contain basic information like the logo with the brand name on it without spelling errors, a watch case material, it's usually steel, and information about the Clockworks Mechanism manufacturing country. The engravings will be sharp and clear. Authentic designer glasses will always have the designer logo, manufacturer information, and a barcode or serial code on the retail box. They come in high-quality cases with distinct lettering and even spacing. You can do some research online and find out what your dream pair should be packed like. The lenses on designer shades are always made of superior quality materials and in most cases have a brand name or initials etched on them. If you can scratch the logo and it easily comes off, it's a fake. The real pair with plastic framing can't be too light and the ones made of stainless steel won't be too heavy. When you try moving the hinges, they won't feel too tight or too floppy. They will be attached using quality molding and screws. When shopping for a cashmere scarf, hold it against light and study the weave. If it looks uneven and irregular, it's more likely to be pure and handcrafted. Only machines can create perfect regular patterns. If it's glowing too much, there is most definitely an amalgam or foreign fiber added to it. Try wearing it around your neck. The real thing will feel soft, smooth, and delicate. As authentic pashmina is hypoallergenic, it also feels warm when you hold it. If you already have a cashmere scarf and doubt its authenticity, check it for bobbles. The real thing will get them over time, just like any other natural fiber. If yours doesn't, it probably has nylon or silk in it. Authentic perfumes have a thick cellophane wrapping sealed in the most careful way to adhere to the box tightly. You won't see wide, uneven seams or excess glue on it. They make real packaging for perfumes from high-quality white paperboard. Check the manufacturer's website and compare the information given there to that on the packaging label. Any mismatch is a sign you're looking at a counterfeit item. Famous brands don't use a lot of dye in their products, so the authentic perfume is usually pale. It always comes in high-quality bottles with a smooth and fine surface, unlike the imitations that are a bit rough and contoured. Uh-oh, your laptop flies out the window. A framed picture from your last vacation goes right after. You slam the front door and run as fast as you can. Slow down. You have a chance to go back in time just 30 minutes and avoid it all. If you want to solve a conflict with your partner, don't use adjectives that make you sound judgmental. Instead of saying good or bad, go with like or don't like or explain the reasons. 
Saying, I didn't like that meal because it wasn't spicy enough, doesn't sound like you're blindly judging your partner. That meal was really bad, does. Replace right or wrong with phrases of agreement or disagreement or explaining yourself. Skip the construction, the truth is, and just get right to the point. Same goes for statements about reality. In the real world, people wash up after dinner is full of judgment. Please help me wash up is just friendly asking for a favor. Now don't repeat yourself. When you keep going over the same thing you've already discussed, it only irritates your partner. Empty words including like and you know also clog up the dialogue. Always use I statements. It shows your partner you're ready to take responsibility for your feelings and thoughts. If you replace you never listen to me with I feel like you don't listen to me, it will make your partner feel less defensive. You're showing them how it looks from your angle and not stating they're bad altogether. Your emotions, including anger, are often tied to a place where they started. If you started fighting in the kitchen, take things outside. Sometimes changing the environment alone can cool you down, put the conflict in perspective, and prepare you for a constructive talk. When you're talking too softly or too loudly, too fast or too slow, the other person is less likely to listen to you. Same happens when an uprising melody at the end of every sentence, or you link too many thoughts with endless ands. Run-on sentences turn off the ears of your listener. Start the conversation side-by-side, side, not face-to-face. -face. When you're emotional and across from your partner, you may feel like they are the problem on the other side. Instead, do a shared task together. Walk the dog, wash up, or go biking. It'll make the conversation easier. Once things get less tense, you can get face-to-face. -face. Don't use rhetorical questions to get things your way. They only heat things up and sound like empty threats. Why do you always have to yell at me? Is a bunch of frustration. I feel really uncomfortable when you yell at me. Could you please stop doing that? Directly shows what you expect from your partner. When you're discussing a problem, never say never or always. When you say something like, you never care about my feelings, your partner will get defensive and remember a bunch of examples when they were super caring. They can also bring up situations that you didn't think about their feelings much either in their defense. So instead, go with, I really needed your support yesterday, and I'm sad you didn't give it to me. Hold off a conversation until you gain control of your own emotions. If you're hungry, angry, lonely, or tired, you can't effectively deal with any stressful situation like conflict. Meet one or all of those basic needs first. Eat something, listen to calming music, call a friend, take a relaxing bath, or walk your dog. You can also try the 478 deep breathing method to calm down. Inhale through your nose for 4 counts, hold it for 7 counts, then release it through your mouth for 8 counts. Always check with your partner first if they're ready for a serious conversation. They might be preoccupied with other thoughts, tired or stressed. If they say they can't talk now, respect that and wait until they're ready to talk productively. Say the simple phrases, help me understand, I understand, or I'm with you with that. They work like magic and make the other side realize you care, and it's not you against them. It's both of you against the problem that you can solve together. Focus on one current issue at a time if you want to resolve it. When you start throwing many complaints at your partner, it creates the kitchen sink effect. The sink gets full of issues, and the more of them are inside, the less likely you are to fully resolve any of them. If you start talking with lecturing intonations, don't be surprised your partner will stop listening. You aren't their boss or teacher, and that sort of tone only turns on resentment. You'll feel ignored and things will only get worse. So ask your questions and let your partner answer them, then express your opinion without sounding bossy. Give them information, not advice, even if they ask you for it. People usually achieve better results if they love their job. Gives the person power to make their own decision to find another job or not. Quit your job if you hate it that much. Sounds like an order they won't want to follow, even if they know it makes perfect sense. Focus on the behavior and not the person. If you call your significant other messy, you'll just offend them. They're likely to respond with an insult, and a small issue can grow into a huge fight. If you ask them to be more careful and not leave their laundry all over the house, they're more likely to be willing to work on that behavior. Make sure you don't sound and behave like a narcissist. Instead of saying, I know best, end of discussion, learn to accept that the other person has their own perspective that's worth listening to. Ask others, not just your partner, to tell you if they notice any narcissistic tendencies in you and work on getting better. 
Don't jump to conclusions and guess what your partner wanted to say or do. Playing detective can be terrible for your relationship and even mess up your own mental health. You might start automatically concluding that any uncertain situation will come out badly and other people are out to hurt you. To stop doing it, try watching other people jump to wrong conclusions on TV. Remember examples from your life when things turned out not like you expected them to. Even if you're miles apart in the conflict, find one small thing to agree on. When you say, yes, you're right, it makes the other person feel heard and validated. It's a good starting point for a dialogue. It's one of the successful strategies used in sales to find a solution for an upset customer. A casual compliment has a similar effect. Don't filter the current situation with your critical inner voice. If you had some negative relationship experience in the past, that voice can tell you things will go the same way. It projects onto your partner and distorts their words to fit with an old image of yourself. This is how, you didn't help me set the table, turns into, you're not doing enough for our relationship. Never bring in allies like other people's opinions that would definitely agree with you or compare your partner to them. It's one of the blame game tools. Blame is always about being right and winning the conflict or being wrong and losing. When your partner feels like you've got the support of others, they will feel like losers. That doesn't contribute to a happier relationship. Write about the conflict and describe your feelings and thoughts in every detail. Journaling is a good way to relieve stress. The process of writing activates the left brain, the analytical and rational one. It helps the emotional right side calm down a bit and lets you better understand yourself and others. You can make the entry a letter to your significant other and explain everything you couldn't say during the conflict. If you keep fighting over similar results over and over, you could have a major difference in core values and beliefs. Ask your partner about it. Your parents probably taught you a different approach to love, relationship, and family roles or money. You can't change someone's fundamental values, but you can understand the difference and conflicts will be less upsetting. Sometimes there's no possible way to find a solution that you both like. In that case, you have to learn to agree to disagree and give up the need to be right. Except that the only solution is to move forward and you don't have to agree on everything unless it's some fundamental values. Celebrate each battle you manage to overcome together. Go out, watch a movie, or just laugh about it out loud. See conflicts as a chance to get to know and understand each other better, and don't try to avoid it by all means. Next time you feel like starting a fight, think of your preferred solution first. Your partner won't be able to help you make things better if you don't know what is better for you. And never ask them for something you aren't ready to do yourself. The first thing that can tell something about a person is the way they walk. Those who walk fast and confidently hold their head up. They're focused and great problem solvers. If they walk with their head held high, having shoulders back and chest forward, then they're sociable. These people like spending time with others and enjoy the appreciation. They're also easily bored and like the challenge. If a person walks with an average pace and looks relaxed, then they're, well, relaxed. They're calm and tend to focus more on others rather than on themselves. They're also easily influenced. Those who walk with a medium pace but in confident strides are very cooperative and good listeners. They're loyal and a bit dependent on others. Those who walk slowly and keep their head lowered are likely to be introverted and shy. If they cross their arms, then they're probably vulnerable and like to be alone. So here's a trick. If you want to appear confident when you walk in somewhere, especially if it's an important business meeting, always check your body language. To always remember making sure of that, you can use a doorway technique. Use something, for example, a doorway as an anchor. Whenever you walk through a doorway, teach yourself to check your body language. Pay attention if you're walking straight, if you're keeping your head up, or other minor details. Do it every time you walk through any doorway. Later, the doorway will become a natural trigger for you, and you'll automatically correct your posture every time you walk through it. Okay, back to the clues. Pay attention to the way the person is dressed. You probably don't wear something that's not your style or vibe, and neither do other people. People who dress casually are easygoing, value comfort, and prefer to be themselves, not feeling the need to impress anyone. People who wear clothes with colorful patterns are creative and like to express themselves through what they wear. Those who wear designer clothes displaying the logos like to show off and show their status. People who wear their working clothes are workaholics who value themselves mostly through their job and achievements at work. 
Those who have official style and wear formal clothes are sophisticated and assertive. People who wear sports clothes are confident. Those who wear neutral colors are closed and don't like to draw attention to themselves, preferring to stay in shade. Even the choice of shoes can tell you something. In one study, people were shown photos of people's boots, and they had to describe the personality of the person to whom the pair of footwear belonged to. Surprisingly, the descriptions were pretty accurate. So, people who wear comfortable shoes are agreeable. People whose shoes are new or just in perfect condition are clingy and anxious. Ankle boots lovers are pushy. If a person has a bag, pay attention to how they carry it. If it's in front of their body, kept close, then they're a cautious and shy person. Now, let's turn to the handshake. It's not just a social ritual, but also a way to get the first impression about the person. A dominant handshake is when the person flips their hand over yours with their palm facing down. This is a dominant person trying to show who's the boss here. They like to take control over others, don't like to take anyone's opinion into account, and might even be a bit pushy sometimes. A submissive handshake is the opposite position, where the person's palm is facing up and their hand is covered by yours. This means the person isn't confident, and you can easily dominate them if you wish. Another one is a floppy handshake, where the person doesn't really give your hand a shake. It's one-sided, and it appears like it's just you who give them one. This handshake means weakness and indifference. There's also a double-hand handshake. It's when a person uses both their hands, usually placing the second hand on the back of the other person's hand. This type says the person accepts the other person's dominance, but invites them for discussion. It's typical for honest and open people who like to talk things through and have a conversation. However, if the second hand is placed not on the back of the opponent's hand, but on top of it, It's a way of self-defense and reveals the lack of trust. Another way to use the second hand is to touch the opponent. So these people give you a handshake, but also touch your back, forearm, or anything else with their free hand. This displays that the person needs company and lacks communications in their life. Now we're off to eye contact. While speaking to the person, pay attention to their eyes. People who keep eye contact are open. They're interested in what you're saying and are paying attention to you. Those who constantly break it are rather nervous and uncomfortable. Or they're just shy. Shy people can't keep eye contact for long because they consider it invasive. If the person blinks a lot, it means they're distressed. And if their eyes are squinted, they're suspicious of you and don't trust you much. Pay attention to how the person treats people who work in service, like restaurant and hotel staff, retail and food service. Service staff have to be nice to the customer, but the customer doesn't have to return the attitude. In this case, the customer is in the position of power. So pay attention how they behave when they have that power. Do they choose to be nice, or do they prefer to treat people poorly when they don't have the obligation to be good guys? Power reveals people's true personality. If a person appears to be nice with you, but they're rude with a waiter in a restaurant, they're not a person to be trusted. Overall, how polite the person is is also a good indicator of their identity. Yes, if a person knows and uses words like please and thank you, then they must be a good person who is considerate and empathetic and respects other people. And, well, if they're rude to others, especially to those who have a lower social status, then they're overprivileged and, well, simply rude. Interestingly, the way animals react to a person can also tell a lot about their personality. Animals don't judge anyone by their looks, their way of thinking, or education. So they're way harder to mess up than with people. Animals draw their opinions based on people's vibe, body language, and facial expressions, which are way harder to control. Some believe that animals just have some sixth sense, and they can smell if a person is good or not. So if animals like someone, then it must be a nice person. Pay attention to the person's reading preferences. People who enjoy classics are empathetic and like to get to know others profoundly. Fantasy books lovers are true daydreamers who like to escape reality and are sometimes out of this world. Historical fiction people are perfectionists who pay attention even to minor details. And horror readers are adventurous and always seeking some adrenaline. People who check their smartphones all the time are probably emotionally unstable. Checking the phone is a way for them to up their mood. People who argue all the time, even when there's no valid reason for that, are narcissistic and self-focused. 
However, if the person argues, but for a reason and carefully picks their arguments, it simply means that they like a good debate. If a person eats fast, it might mean they have a high level of anxiety, or they have theater tickets and are running late. Also, pay attention to where a person looks when they're drinking from a cup. Those who look inside the cup are idealistic and introspective people who constantly reflect on their feelings and emotions. People who look out of the cup are usually extroverted, carefree, and trusting, but they can be easily influenced. Some people close their eyes when they drink. This means they're either uncomfortable or just deep in their own thoughts. When people clink glasses, those whose glass is higher have a high self-esteem, and those who place their glasses lower think of themselves worse than they are. People who are highly intelligent tend to have a sloppy handwriting. So if you can't read a note from your colleague or a random person you just met, don't judge them too closely. You might have just made the acquaintance of a genius. You're running through a dark alley looking for that new cafe your friends are waiting at. You can hear all sorts of scary, mysterious sounds. Ouch! What was that? Some monster just jumped right into your head. You sprint for a few more seconds, finally reach your destination, and everyone starts laughing at you. You yell at them to call 911, but then you see in the mirror, there's a cat sitting on your head. In case of real emergencies, you can rely on your iPhone to help you out if you activate Emergency SOS. It will turn on a loud siren to let everyone around know you're in trouble or scare away the bad guys. It automatically calls the emergency services in your area to send help your way. And if you decide to turn that feature on, it can also send an automated text message to a contact you choose. To activate that emergency SOS, you have to hold down the lock button and one of your volume buttons together for 5 seconds. You can also enable activation by clicking the screen lock button 5 times in a row in Settings, Emergency SOS, Call with Side button. To use this feature to the fullest, you can assign your emergency contacts. Go to Health app, click on your profile picture, and select Medical ID in the menu that opens next. Tap Edit, scroll down to Emergency Contacts, and tap the Add button. Now you can select one or several people and specify their relationship to you. When you're ready, don't forget to tap Done to save all the changes. Now, in case of trouble, your iPhone will text your emergency contacts your current location and let them know you've activated the SOS. If you're moving, they'll be updated on your final destination. You can also fill in all the medical data in case you're unconscious and should need first responders' help. If you have an Android, you can activate emergency mode by holding up the power key and tapping emergency mode when the power menu opens up. You can also quickly tap the power button three times in a row. You'll have to tap the box to agree to emergency mode terms and conditions, of course, and then tap turn on. If your Android phone doesn't have a power key, you'll have to swipe down on the screen to open quick settings and tap the power icon and emergency mode. The screen will go dark, and apps will be limited to help you save battery. It'll let you use the flashlight, sound loud alarms, send your location, and of course, make emergency calls. You can call from the lock screen. Just swipe up and tap emergency call to dial the number. You'll see your registered emergency contacts at the top of the screen. You can assign up to four of such contacts in Settings, About Phone, Emergency Information. The exact location can differ from phone to phone. It also helps if you fill in all your medical information in this section. If you ever have to use the SOS feature, your phone will take pictures with your front and rear cameras and record ambient audio. This data will be sent to all of your emergency contacts together with your precise location and a message saying, I need help. If your Android doesn't have service or works without a SIM card, it'll still let you call 911, picking up the signal from another carrier. When you don't need emergency mode anymore, you can tap three vertical dots to open more options and choose to turn it off. If you want to know exactly how strong your signal is, turn off Wi-Fi and call this. It will launch the Field Test tool. On older iOS, it shows you a number like in the top left-hand corner of the screen. If you have a newer iOS, it opens up the main menu with device info. Tap LTE and then Serving Cell Meds. The RSRP0 and RSPR1 are your cellular signal strength in numbers. They're more accurate than bars and always negative. The closer the number is to minus 50, the better. Minus 130 is the worst you can have. 
On an Android, you can find it out in Settings, More Options, or More Settings. Open About Phone, move to Mobile Networks, then tap Signal Strength. If it's not there, try Network Type or SIM Status. Never turn your phone off in an emergency, even if you're low on battery. If you keep it on, it'll let the emergency services contact you and find you using GPS services. If you don't want to switch to emergency mode for some reason, but want to keep your battery alive for longer, turn down screen brightness and set your screen to turn off after the shortest possible time. Turn off vibration, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and data roaming, and don't run any apps except for emergency ones. Don't start shutting down background apps one by one, though. Doing it eats more battery than letting them run loose. If you went out with your friends or colleagues and have to go through an unsafe area, you can track everyone's location on WhatsApp using the Live Location feature. First, you need to give the app permission to see your location in Settings, Apps and Notifications, Advanced, App Permissions, Location, Turn On WhatsApp. Whew! It can differ phone to phone, but should work. Then open the chat and tap Attach. Choose Location and Share Live Location. Here, you can select how long to share it with the participants of an individual or a group chat. Tap Send. You can stop sharing it at any time. You can also share your location in real time or request the whereabouts of your loved ones via Google Trusted Contacts app. If you don't respond to their request for a while when they know you're in transit, it automatically sends them your location. Download offline maps when traveling or going to some new place in your own city. They can help you out in case you're in an unfamiliar area and have poor or no signal at all. Use a password instead of a 4-digit or 6-digit passcode on your phone. You can switch to it in Settings, Touch ID or Face ID in Passcode, Change Passcode. Enter your old passcode, then tip Passcode Options and Custom Alphanumeric Code. Make it a mix of uppercase, lowercase, numbers, and symbols. Choose a fingerprint over facial recognition. It's possible to fool your phone with a high-quality photo of you to unlock it. Fingerprints aren't that easy to recreate. If you're going through an unsafe area, you can choose to disable biometrics for a while. Go to Settings, Touch ID or Face ID and Passcode, and turn off Touch ID or Face ID. Once you're safe again, you can log your fingerprint or face back into the system. On an Android, you can enable lockdown mode. It lets you instantly disable fingerprint authentication and hides notifications on the lock screen to protect your data. You or someone else who gets hold of your phone will only be able to unlock it by entering the password or PIN. To activate lockdown mode, open Settings, scroll all the way to Security and Location, and there, tap Lock Screen Preferences. Choose to enable Show Lockdown option. Then, you'll just have to press and hold the power button to put your phone in that mode. To help your iPhone recognize you faster in any weather conditions, you can add an alternative appearance for Face ID. Put on your winter hat or glasses, cover your face with a scarf, and open Settings, Face ID, and Passcode. Set up an alternative appearance. It works for iOS 12 and later versions. Stock up on emergency apps available for both iPhones and Androids. They can give you instructions on what to do before, during, and after a natural disaster and even claim your insurance later. Some do it in the form of trivia questions to help you remember. There's an earthquake app that tracks the phones of its users to measure the distance and define the locations where the natural disaster is the most severe. Hopefully not where you are. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on.